Hi, I'm Elke Valovirta, and on this third uh, episode of In Style of In the Style of series, we're gonna check out Zach Wild. Yes, indeed. Uh, that was a Mr. Chinka train from No More Tears. Okay, Zach. Mm, those who, who've uh, followed my, my career, <clears throat> listened to the albums, the, the bands I played with, uh, especially God's Plague, I guess it's pretty obvious that Zach is, is one of my, uh, my biggest influences. Probably you know, Randy is kind of like, he was the, the first like lead player that I really got into and, and then quite shortly after, after came Zach. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, I mean, the guy has released so many great albums with Ozzy, Black Label, Prime and Glory, his own, he's been guesting on, 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 on a lot of stuff. So, uh, I decided that I will uh, focus focus on the on the two most important albums uh, for me, which are No More Tears and No Rest for the Wicked. Uh, like I told on the Randy video, that I I I I I've, I uh, found it Randy like early '90s when I had played a couple of years and. Uh, that was basically the only thing I cared, you know. Ozzy had released No Rest for the Wicked, Zack was on it. I, I I, didn't listen to it. I was like, nah, it's Randy, you know, this blonde guy looks like Randy. I'm, well, yeah. I mean, because back then you didn't have internet or anything, you would actually have to buy an album. So I just, you know, didn't have the money or the interest. But then uh, when No More Tears came out in 90, I think 92, 9192 again and, and uh, I didn't pay attention first to that but then a couple of my friends says like hey Elga you definitely should check now now the the Aussie's new guitar player I mean it's it's I know it's Randy but hey check out this this young kid goes like what and and uh, well I was younger than I was like maybe 15 16 well I checked him out and I was like holy damn I, this is great. I mean, no rest for, for the weekend. It was everything that I was trying to do. You know, I had the classic Randy thing, but I also love Lineage Skinner and Southern Rock and ZZ Top. You know, those. <laughs> Where I, I got the, got the pinch from, from Billy Gibbons, and and then uh, I heard Zach and he was doing those pins like. <laughs> I'm 
was like, oh man, hey, you can do it like that too. So I already had the technique. Uh, I kind of figured it out by myself. I listened to ZZ Top. And, and uh, well, then, then uh, well, I learned basically everything from No More Cheers. And after that, I, I got into No Rest for the Weekend. Because, like, okay, what was the first time? I was like, oh, oh this is good too. Damn. Why, why nobody told me earlier? But anyway, yeah, uh, yeah, big influence. Uh, I, I met him. Uh, uh, we had a long talks about uh, guitars and stuff. Amazing, humble guy. Lots of, you know, self irony and stuff. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, I have a tattoo. We, we. This is eighth uh, of June, two thousand five, when I, I met him. He actually played uh, the originator of this. This signature guitar, it's a top guy, but that's on another video. Anyway, uh, Zach's tone, Zach's gear, what he used on those albums, there's a lot of info. I'm not gonna go into details because there's really good video on YouTube by Michael Nielsen. He's an American uh, producer, guitar player, songwriter, etc. He has a great YouTube channel. I'll put a link on the description. You can check and maybe there to, uh, to the video. It's awesome. He, he, I mean, he's knows the producer, you know, Michael Wagner, who's produced those albums, and and so and he has the gear that Zach's used, and he, he goes through everything, you know, what, what was used and what and how he doubled and amazing video. Uh, check it out. Uh, but. Uh, the the gear that we you know most of us know or identify Zach is is a uh, uh, Les Paul with a uh, mahogany body maple top shaved maple neck ebony fingerboard EMG 8185 and a uh, Marshall JZ Mayhardy 2203 with 6550 tubes. I have now EL34s here, but uh, as you heard, it's you know 6550 is kind of like the military equivalent of EL34, so they are on the same ballpark. 6550, they are they have a bit more headroom, so you can crank the amp without having uh, power tube distortion uh, on not that early stages as you have with EL34s. But I mean. I have my, my master at two, and so it's. I've used the L34s forever, and they work fine. Uh, and then what he he used is a uh, either his own signature wah or the Jim Dunlop, Jimmy Hendrix wah that I have here now. This is I don't know twenty. 25 years old. <laughs> I put a picture there on, on the gear that I have, and then uh, he boosts the amp like me with the uh, Super Overdrive. Or nowadays his own own uh, MXR Wild Wild uh, Overdrive. I had that too. It's quite the same. I like ST1 a little bit better because uh, I think the low end is, is a bit tighter with the ST. It's, I just like it how it feels, but they're really close. And then uh, the chorus ensemble, what he 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 used a long time. I guess at some point early he had a super chorus, but then then uh, seen a lot of pictures and you know interviews where he says it's it's the chorus ensemble that's basically on all the time, and he uses to split the signal into two heads. I've done that too. I when we I, I when I I played with this live, I usually split the signal into two, so then it's really wide sound, the stereo effect. The stereo chorus is a uh, stereo chorus. And then I have the decimator ISP there, just to cut off the, the his. Okay, and, and cabinets, Marshall cabinets, he, used, he uses nowadays EV200 mod speakers. Uh, he didn't use those uh, early on in his career, because I, I have a bunch of old magazines here. Uh, this is from Prana Glory era, and I, it's it's a 
on some interviews it's it's like says it's V thirties. On some I guess it's it just says that yeah just does regular seventy five or seventy watts. V thirty is a seventy watt speaker, the most used speaker on Marshall cabinet, which is a, a bit dark to my taste, is it's, it's the G twelve T seventy five. So probably either one of those. I think V thirties when I listen the albums could be closer. But then they were on tour tour and uh, he says in the in the interview that uh, I think it was with Black Label and uh, he broke uh, his cabinet blew, the, the speakers blew and he went to a repair shop that hey I need new speakers and uh, they only had EV 200s there and they put it then there and uh, Zach liked it and he put it then to all of these cabinets. Anyway yeah what I have now here is is uh, the head, then the signal goes to serve reactive load slash IR load and I have there now uh, own hammers IR of uh, Marshall 4x12 cabinet uh, with vintage 30s. The 70 watt speakers mic with SM57 and Royer 121. Then the signal goes to Focusrite audio interface and then into Logic and I have a little bit of a uh, stereo reverb in there just to make it uh, a bit wider because Zach had a quite actually quite a lot of reverb on those two albums because I mean it was late 90s, uh, late 80s, early 90s, you know everything had reverb and chorus. <laughs> so yeah, so th the sound is... <laughs> But uh, yeah, I got a bit excited. But that's the sound. And, and uh, uh, if we go, I think that's one of the. That's what that was the first I think song that Zach or first riff that Zach wrote with Ozzy. And it's it's a. Uh, I read uh, uh, an interview where Zach says where the inspiration came, and it came from uh, uh, this song. So we all know that. So Zach just kind of like put it on steroids. And uh, so that's in uh, F sharp minor. H how you play it? It's, I mean, I think it, on the album it's like. But then I, I've heard live versions where he plays it. But uh, you know, both work. And then the the verse is it's it's pretty pretty simple. So and 
and, and the, the pre-chorus starts uh, with the uh, C sharp and this double stop pick. I think that, that's something like... A little bit a 80s style, style in there, so... I think it's pinch from from A. Yeah, and the solo, uh, it's uh, it's a pentatonic uh, from from C, C sharp. So it's like this economic picking. He uses he picks alternates a lot, but sometimes he he uses economic picking, like on on this one. So basically, it's it's like this. So down, down, up, down, down, up, and one, two, three, one, one, two, three, 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 four. And then this really fast uh, pentatonic. So uh, like this. And then wah, and really wide vibratos, like... And raking those, those strings. And then comes the, the fake whammy bar trick that Zach uses a lot on many songs. He plays... I've heard him play this different... The guy on the album is... That kind of goes, you know, that's that, that technique. But uh, the idea is that you bend, like... Yeah. Anyway, so that's one of his like standard tricks, which... I, I, I used to I use occasionally too, but a really 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 cool cool song and and uh, you know what the, then the the solo this kind of like it's like but it sounds like he doesn't he just you get this nice a little bit blues. And then these double stop bends. A really wide vibrato on, on the E. I mean, you could play it here, but then you. At least I can't get enough wide vibrato, so G strings. Yeah, Miracle Man. Uh, another, I think, a key track that uh, that shows the the kind of like the, a bluesy thing and the chicken picking thing he does is a, a Crazy Babies. Because I mean, I think Zach had that you know that bluesy kind of stuff already coming when when they did not notice for the wicket, but on on the on the No More Cheers it actually like really bloomed he kind of found his style and and, and the band because that's i think no more cheers is, is like a, no no rest for the wicked was a step in between to the no more cheers but you can sense that there's there is there are elements like crazy babies of the you know like crazy babies riff 
uh, Mr. Trink Tinker Train. <laughs> So kind of same, but anyway, crazy babies. It's a uh, it's really cool, cool, cool stuff in there, and the solo is that's crazy. <laughs> I mean, wow. But anyway, the the main riff of crazy babies is in, is in E minor. Again, he uses these kind of blues things there, but uh, it goes like this. And it continues uh, the verses, so it's like. were basically there so uh, the verse riff is just a variation of the and the chorus is, is nice it's again this if you play this like and when you play with balls right When you play that those songs, you never can have a, enough vibrato and you know just pounding the street, the strings. Uh, and then you know that comes the, the middle part, which is like a. something like that and then comes the the solo it's it's, uh, it's crazy so uh, it's really hard to play without the tracks because it's kind of all over the place so I'll just I'll just uh, let's go through what, what happens here though basically there's this uh, uh, kind of country star thing <laughs> Something, something like that. I'm, I'm not, I, I've seen him play this differently, but basically there is this. Again, this. Then comes this really uh, took me a while to figure it out. It's like kind of like at least how I think. So. This is in, in, in B minor, so basically he starts on the fourth, uh, fifth box, like...
crazy. <laughs> then comes this really fast uh, pentatonic lick, but instead of playing a... He uses the blue note. So it's like, uh, it's six times this. You can play it like, uh, or then just have like uh, anchor your first finger in index finger. Kind of like that. I mean, he plays it probably a bit cleaner. But uh, then, uh, uh, what? Uh, then, then comes this. Uh, You know, Randy trills like <laughs> so. Crazy baby, there's a crazy solo, but uh, it's it's you know there's a uh, chicken picking, uh, blues, pentatonics, uh, and then this, this this awesome he uses on this. It's like the third box of uh, B minor pentatonic so. And he uses again the blue note. There. And then bend to to A. So uh, yeah, really, really um, in inspiring stuff. And then the there's the the trill up, and uh, then then there's the ending is like. So this is basically a technique that, uh, where you, let me demonstrate it on the G string. Like I use the this curve here, like some people use their palm. I think Zach uses palm. So when when you move it towards the neck and just lightly touch the strings, it creates artificial harmonics. Pretty cool, cool trick. Okay, uh, yeah, that was crazy, babies. Uh, wasn't the best playing of mine, cause uh, that solo is actually it's it's quite hard to hard to play, and I haven't played it in a while. <laughs> but uh, hopefully, but you know the ideas in in the style of so what Zach basically uses is is, is a pentatonic and a blues blues scale and uh, major minor pentatonics uh, on, on, on those albums. Later on his career he has used uh, like diatonic modes a little bit like Randy and what I do so uh, but yeah. Okay then uh, uh, let's move to you No know, More Tears which is uh, one of my all-time top five albums. There's like No More Tears tribute or this tribute was Randy is playing uh, Springsteen's live box, uh, Leonard Skinner, one more from the road, probably Guns N' Roses, Appetite, you know, maybe some Van Halen, it's hard, and Panther. But, uh, but yeah, so the, I, I briefly showed you the Mr. Chinka train. Uh, it's, to me, it's kind of like a, a brother song of Crazy Babies, a bit similar riff, uh, same, same ballpark again quite wild solo with a lot of fast pentatonics and, and uh, some chicken picking stuff. So uh, let, let's go through that. So the, the main riff, it's an E minor.
So what it does is basically turns off the overdrive and lowers down the volume to get that almost almost clean tone. And then uh, when when the the verse kicks in, there's again this uh, uh, signature wild. Uh, <laughs> Not sure what he does. I've I've seen live versions where he plays it different. But the idea is this. And then the verse is pretty cool, chunky like. That is played on the acoustics. I think guitars on the album they play maybe some harmonies there, but uh, live I, I, uh, I've heard that it's basically did what the acoustic guitars are. So it's like E, e this kind of E minor. <laughs> Slash uh, C sharp, and then comes the pre chorus with the song starts, and it's like this. I've seen tablatures where it said like, and I've seen where it's like, I don't think it's. None of them. I think it's 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 one guitar is doing and one. You can hear it when you listen to the headphones. It's so uh, you know separate from the that I think it's like two separate modes. Probably live. I don't know. Maybe he played it. I played it just like. Okay, and then comes the the solo. It's a it's a it's minor E minor pentatonic, but there is also major pentatonic stuff. So uh, the solo goes something like this. So uh, you know, it starts with the your usual. That's a good way always to start a solo with the double stop bend. bend. Then comes again this fast traditional uh, Zaklik, but he ends it with the uh, the, the blue scale. a major pentatonic because major minor is so is major then minor then again again comes this uh, kind of like your Standard wild lick. Probably a bit of chicken picking. So, uh, Sometimes I 
played is this with the with the chicken picking and sometimes not. It's I don't really think about it. It's just whatever feels uh, easiest. So yeah, as a Tinker Train, great uh, song, great solo, and uh, uh, what else? Uh, yeah, another. A great track, I think, is is a uh, well. All of the tracks are great. I think there's not a single weak track. It's like I said, one of the best albums ever. Uh, I don't want to change the world. Uh, that's in the key of A. Uh, it goes like uh, this. <laughs> So the main riff is really simple, in, in, it's like A, C and D. And then pinches from D and C. And then there comes the, you know, where he doesn't play that much and then again the main riff comes and then the chorus is like, uh, kind of not rock. So it's like uh, A, D slash F sharp, G, D, A, and then comes this. country. Kind of like fast. I've seen why I play it like this like uh, octave lower so it's easier, you know. Like that. Okay, basic the riff and then the the, the part before the solo like that and the solo again it's not a fantastic uh, example of Wilde's uh, Zach's uh, technique especially on those on the, his approach by combining uh, minor major pentatonics uh, country uh, chicken picking thing. So uh, this all goes uh, something like this. today but you get the get the idea uh, it's a yeah so you know it starts with this uh, let me take the SD off so country and then again country and chi all, chicken ping all the time. And then comes this uh, this part he uh, I think on the album it's something like this but I, I see him play this you know differently different variations but basically it's uh, like chromatics <laughs> And 
then comes again one of these fake whammy bar tricks. <laughs> I think it's something like that. And then uh, these uh, unison bands. Really fast E minor pentatonic click. It goes like. So, yeah. And then comes the clean part. And so on. But a uh, great song. Another great riff, I think, is uh, Desire. <laughs> Also, great solo. I think many people play it a little bit wrong, at least the beginning, because it's it's it sounds really simple, but there's little things that most often when I've heard people to play, including me, <laughs> miss this, miss it. But it's really cool. It's this like. Let me play it for you and then let, let's go through. that uh, so yeah so the the beginning is it's this you know standard wild wild things that's the first it's not that fast as many people think and then it slides and then instead of yeah, but, Unison bends. Then comes this. I used to play that really fast too. Then I figured that it's not actually that fast, so I basically to just down pick it. And then it comes this. Uh, you can play it here or sometimes I've heard him play like I think on the album it's like and then comes this uh, this kind of lift. Again, you know, follows the chords with pentatonics 
first box. Put heavy vibrato on bench, and then comes this. Really fast. And then this standard wad. And then it's slide on the album, so I think it's just like... You just go like randomly and then end it up with the bend from, uh, from, from E to F sharp, which is the song's key. Okay, that was Desire. Then I think the, the Crown Jewel, uh, the title track. So that uses a, uh, a drop tuning. So we drop the E string, in this case E flat, to C sharp. Drop D tuning. So, yeah, it's, it's a long song, uh, I, again I've heard people play the main riff, like, I think not the right way, so, at least I think it goes like... is from the third fret and then like that and then there's a you know the bass continues blah 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 and the pre So the, the choral riff is... And the outro is basically the same, but like twisted around. And so on. And the solo, it's uh, the part before, the easy part, it's, it's basically D. Natural minor and that kind of stuff, but the the actual solo. I mean, it's it's basically I've seen Wild play that song live and on videos many times. It, it, it's quite improvised playing that bluesy stuff, and then the the ending is basically that always stays the same, well not always, but it, it's it's basically like, you know, it's it's an e, e, D minor pentatonic and a little bit of blues notes, like, you know... So that, 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 the ending part is, it's just D minor first box. Then the second box. Third box. And then these, uh, are, these two arpeggios, I've, I've, I've seen and heard Zach play uh, 
little bit variations. So sometimes I've, I've heard him do like... I think that's what's on the album, so... Then I've also he he heard sometimes him playing like... And even... But, you know, same, same idea. Uh, yeah, what else? Um, maybe I should plan this a little bit more, but, uh, you know, I just wanted to, to, uh, because the, the you know and Randy videos, been, been, uh, people been asking me, you know, can I do more and just, you know, did this, because, I mean, uh, I still remember everything pretty good. I mean, because I played this song so much and listened to the albums. Uh, uh, yeah, those two albums, they are, if, if I think, uh, uh, Zach Wilde as its um, most uh, inspirational. I mean, he has a lot of great stuff afterwards, uh, but uh, on these two albums, I think uh, all the songs are great, all the solos are great, sometimes really crazy and wild, <laughs> but really cool. Uh, and, uh, well, I mean, maybe while we are on the drop tuning, let's go through uh, Osmosis' first single, Perry Mason, which I think is one of Oz's best songs. Amazing riff and amazing solo. That's kind of like, you know, the, there Zach Wilde uses a little bit of those uh, and diatonic modes. So yeah, let's go through that. And he even taps. So so the the main riff uh, goes like this. But it's, it's again a D blues, D pentatonic riff in, in the, the same ballpark than the normal cheers. So it's like this uh, higher octaves of D. Uh, and the chorus is cool as this unison bench. Yeah, and then the solo. Great example of, of, of Zach's uh, use of pentatonics and stuff. So it's. Let me see if I remember it. Uh, it's like. Wow. 
Yeah, <laughs> something like that. So it's, you know, wah wah all the way, except on the, on the last uh, diatonic run. So it's like... This tapping thing, I'm not really sure, but I think he, he keeps his left hand here on the, on the sixth and seventh fret of G string. And then just that, and then just goes uh, up the scale. It's like a natural minor, and then comes this uh, fast pentatonic click. And then a blues note. So it's like... Something like and then it goes to the chorus and so on. Yeah, great song, great solo. The sound on the osmosis, it's it's strange. I mean, the guitars, they have like, it's, I mean, it's ugly. It kind of fits, but then it's, it's a little bit strange. I don't know what, what's, what we're thinking. There's like this strange upper thing going on. Well, hey, anyway, uh, hopefully you, uh, like this and, you know, you maybe got some ideas to your playing or whatever and hopefully I was able to tell something that you, you find interesting and uh, yeah hopefully you liked also the playing uh, some of them was, was pretty okay and some I stumbled a bit but uh, you know it's my dogma that I don't really you know shoot this like multiple takes you know it's life you know sometimes you have a good day sometimes you don't I have a pretty okay day today, playing wise. So uh, yeah, I mean, Zach Wild, one of the one of the great ones, and definitely my my favorite, uh, one of my favorite guitar players, and and uh, uh, sound wise, probably one of my favorites. And the approach, like keep it simple. I mean, Marshall Jay Z Main 800 was my first first amplifier, tube amplifier and super overdrive, my first pedal. I didn't know at the time that Zach used those, but uh, when I heard that he uses the same stuff, I was like, well, that's stomach. That's pretty damn cool. And uh, I still have this after 25 years. Yeah, why fix it if it ain't broken? Hey, until next time, stay tuned. Goodbye, Elge. Out. <laughs>